Hey Ramesh, check out this cat video I just came across. Oh wait. Sorry, never mind. I just ran out of data. Sorry. It's okay. This is exactly the kind of problem our research tries to tackle. We primarily answer three questions. Firstly, how worldwide is access to the World Wide Web? Secondly, how would stakeholders benefit from web equity? And lastly, how do we work towards equitable web access? To answer that first question, we must address the key barriers that are limiting people from viewing the web. There are a bunch of them, such as digital illiteracy, censorship, but the barrier that we focus on in our work is cost of access, which is comprised of two things. Broadband price, which is how much it costs per byte in a region, and web page size, which is the total number of bytes that a user must buy in order to access a web page. We know that cost of access is a key barrier because of a survey conducted by the World Bank in 11 emerging countries, which showed that nearly half of their respondents had difficulty paying for their mobile data usage. This trend isn't getting any better though, as we see the, an increase in the demands in the complexities of user experiences, web page sizes have been on the rise, while broadband prices have remained largely stagnant. This means that each access has become more and more expensive. Access isn't equally expensive everywhere, however, as we see variations in both broadband price and web complexity. We analyzed the broadband prices in 206 countries using the ITU dataset. And we measure the web complexity using the Alexa Top 1000 URLs across 99 countries, culminating in a total data set of around 72,000 web pages. Zooming into broadband prices, the UN Broadband Commission considers broadband in a region to be affordable if it costs 2% or less of that region's gross national income per capita. We found that 94 countries currently do not meet that target for a 2 GB data only plan. As for web complexity, we see discrepancies arise between developed and developing regions. In developed regions, the average page size is 2.64 MB, while in developing regions, it's larger than that, it's 2.87 MB. To quantify affordability, we propose a novel fairness metric, PAW index, which considers both web page sizes and broadband prices. What it's essentially telling us is the reduction required in average page size in a region in order to equalize web accesses around the world. So a PAW of greater than one would indicate unaffordable access. As you can observe in this graph with the red dotted line indicating a PAW of one, a lot of developing countries have unaffordable access. To be more specific, 48 out of the 96 countries in our data set have a PAW of greater than one for at least one data plan. Let's move on to the second question, which is what do stakeholders stand to gain from web equity? Firstly, let's talk about users. Do they even want their web pages to be reduced? There exists a trade-off between web page quality and the number of accesses. To answer this question, we conducted a, a user study with 100 participants and we showed them 10 pages with varying levels of reduction and we found that a significant number of people were willing to trade off web page quality for a greater number of accesses. There are two other main stakeholders in this equation, website operators and network providers. They both will gain more revenue since we are lowering the barrier of entry to the web, which will bring more users online. So now that we know that this problem exists, it matters, and that people are willing to adopt solutions, we will move on to our third and final question, which is how do we work towards making the web equitable? Introducing Affordable Web for All. AW4A transcodes pages based on both web page quality and affordability. 
before we get into the details of our framework, what went wrong with prior work? In short, they were infeasible. But the long story is that they suffered from inherent design flaws, such as the fact that they lacked web developer consent in a way that impacted revenue. And they tended to break pages, rendering them completely unusable at times. We considered the weaknesses of prior work while we converge on our goals and principles. Firstly, AW4A transcodes pages based on web affordability. We do this by using the PAW index while we calculate web page size targets. Secondly, we take into account user privacy and web developer consent, and we do this by transcoding pages on the server side and without the use of any proxies. AW4A is essentially solving an optimization problem, which maximizes page quality given page size constraints defined by PAW. We define total quality as the weighted average of the individual qualities of the objects on the page. We know that this problem is NP hard, and you can check out the proof for that in the paper, which is why we approximate a solution using a two-stage approach. In the first stage, we consider optimizations which have no impact on web page quality. So this would be low-hanging fruit such as minification or gzip compression. If the target page size has been met at this point, then well and good, we return the transcoded page. But a lot of pages won't reach the target at this point, which is why they'd move on to stage two. At this point, they'll undergo optimizations that may have an impact on web page quality. So this could be things like image resolution reduction or JavaScript reduction. This is where it gets interesting because we want to reduce the quality in a strategic fashion. So let's zoom in to stage two. We designed two approximation algorithms for stage two. Firstly, grid search, which is a naive brute force approach. This searches a discretized space of, of optimizations to, to, to transcode a page, and it gives pages a very high quality. However, this runs in exponential time, which means it is infeasible for pages that are dynamic and would need to be transcoded regularly. This is why we also have HPS, heuristic space search. This uses a, a set of heuristics to transcode a page and it runs in linear time. However, this gives pages of slightly lower quality as compared to grid search. Let me give you a sense of the intuition behind our image heuristics. Firstly, we have area on the web page. As you can observe, finer details tend to get lost in smaller images. So changes made to them would be less visible to the naked eye. Secondly, we have byte efficiency, because some images just seem to handle reduction better. For example, PNGs that haven't undergone compression would be a better target for reduction as compared to a more performant format, such as WebP. While we won't get into the details of the heuristics right now, you can check out the paper for that, we can attest to their effectiveness. Our evaluation showed that half of the pages that we generated maintained a quality of 0.98 or higher. Moreover, users in our small-scale user study tended to prefer HPS-generated pages over their Brave and Opera Mini counterparts. In conclusion, we show that unaffordability is a key barrier to accessing the web users are willing to trade off quality for quantity of access, and that there are practical solutions to improve the affordability of the internet. For more information, you can check out the full paper or contact us here.